Hello everyone, welcome to Sunday, January 12th edition of Living Life. You know water, let me just say that, water, something that we absolutely need and something that we drink every day. Uh, for most of us, we get our source from maybe a purified system, maybe we buy bottled water. Well, for myself, I go to the local water purifying place and every week, guys, and this is like one of my chores that I really do not like to do, I have two five-gallon jugs that I fill up every week. I go all the way like three to four minutes. I know that doesn't sound long, but when I'm getting water, it's very, very long. And I fill up these two five-gallon tanks. I load it into my car. I go all the way home, I load it all the way back and put it inside the closet and I repeat that process on a weekly basis over and over and over again and sometimes I'm thinking, man, I need a better system here but I don't have the money to do that so I'm just going to keep doing this. Jesus was talking also about water today to the woman at the well and he says, I'm going to give you a water where you don't have to come back to this fountain. It's a different kind of water. Let's take a look at what kind of water Jesus is talking about. John chapter 4, verses 15 through 26. The woman said to him, Sir, Give me this water, so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and His worshipers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When He comes, He will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am He. So right now, we're in John chapter 4, verses 15 to 26. And you know this story very well. Jesus is speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well. But I wanted you to know the dialogue right before. It says here in verse 13 and 14, Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And in today's passage, the woman responds and says, Sir, give me this water so that I don't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water, just like myself. Man, I would do a lot to not go back to get this water. And so she's thinking convenience. She's thinking, man, this is so great. I don't have to have this water. Man, how do I do this? And she Ask Jesus, I want the answer. And the kind of water that Jesus is talking about is not physical, though. The kind of water that Jesus is talking about here is one of the Spirit. It's this water that when you drink, you just feel so quenched, so satisfied. Especially, let's think, it's in the realm of Spirit. Now, Having said all that, are there times when you feel spiritually dry? Hey, just 
you're going through life, things might be good on the outside, you might, you're, even your businesses might be going great, your relationships are going great, you know, you've made a huge sale or you got a bonus that Christmas is coming up, maybe you're getting a Christmas bonus, a lot of things, your, your kids are loving on you, they're giving you Christmas gifts, I mean, a lot of things are going well, but there's just something lacking. There's just something that's not right, and you kind of sense, maybe I'm just feeling spiritually dry. I'm, maybe I'm not feeling that connection with God. There's just something going on spiritually that's not right, and I got to get right. You know, there's many people who come to me um, as members to a pastor, and they say, you know, Pastor Sam, I'm feeling spiritually dry these days. Well, Jesus is saying, I'm the answer to that spiritual dryness. I'm the one who's going to quench that spiritual thirst. The question is how? And Jesus continues on. This is the thing that I really want to push through. It's very, very important. He says, first and foremost, this spiritual quenching. One of the greatest ways to experience this water that quenches spiritual dryness is actually through knowing Jesus who gives you a clear access to God, amen? Without Jesus, there's no way you're gonna connect with the Father and connecting with God is the way, connecting with the Holy Spirit and without Jesus, we cannot fully associate or connect with this triune God. So through Jesus, He gives us access to this fountain and you go to this fountain and you start drinking how? Jesus is starting to talk about worship. You know, one of the greatest ways to quench your spiritual thirst is through worship. Did you guys know that? Man, I remember there's times when I was super dry and I just knew I needed a breakthrough. Amen. Anybody, anybody experiencing that? And, you know, the Sunday worships for me has been kind of routine. How many of you guys feel that? Or our spiritual disciplines kind of feel routine. And that day I just said, you know, I'm going to break through somehow. I'm going to break through somehow. So I painstakingly started thinking about Jesus. I painstakingly started saying, you know, I'm going to not be in my flesh. I'm going to be in the spirit and started asking in prayer, God, would you just ha allow me to just break through today and experience you. It's not about the song selection. It's not about how, how wonderful that song is or how emotionally I feel because I just need a breakthrough. So I started praying. And, and as I was going to church, I started feeling this preparation. And as I was going through church, there was even still that spiritual barrier. It's as, you know, the Old Testament prophets, when they're going to uh, worship in Jerusalem, going up that hill to the holy mountain, it was kind of that kind of just struggle. But I kept on pushing and pushing and pushing. And when I was there at worship, the first song went out and I just kept on pushing because I wasn't feeling God. The second song came on out. I was like still struggling, but I kept kept on pushing. God, I need a breakthrough. I need you to touch me. I need your water to well up in my soul. And as I constantly started singing with all my heart, I felt the Spirit slowly coming. I said, yes, God, I need you. I need you. You are the God of my life. And boom, the Holy Spirit fell upon me. This water that was welling up, as the text says, welling up within my soul started consuming me and I felt the living water satisfy, quench that dryness that I had. Brothers and sisters, this is it. Jesus is not only the axis but the source of you feeling a spiritual quenching that cannot come from anything else of this world or anything that you make of it. You cannot make it. It's just the spiritual quenching is when you know that you have broken through the spiritual layers and you have met God in a personal and intimate way through worship. So in application, I want to give you guys a couple of steps how you can really experience this living water in worship, especially when you're feeling spiritually dry. You know, one of the things that um, I need to highly, clearly express is that it is Jesus. It is the Lord Jesus 
that gives us access and allows this water to swell up. So when you're um, going through this challenge, share and say the name Jesus. Jesus, Lord, I need this. I need this so bad. Lord, grant me access to experience this living water. And not only that, when it comes down to worship, I said it is worship. We need to just continue to push through until we experience this breakthrough of God. So with those things, I want to pray for you. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to experience the spring of living water through Jesus Christ who gives us access into the Holy of Holies to give you deep worship and to receive this amazing satisfaction of really experiencing the water of life come into us. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to experience that. May each and every person who is listening to this as they pray, bless them, allow them to experience your quenching of water through their worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 이 프로그램은 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. 